This is the final lecture for chapter nine. And the first topic we're going to look at is bond length and bond order. And this is relatively straightforward, but bond order for starters is the number of electron pairs in the bond. Okay, so for example, if we have a single bond, the order would be one. First order. If we have a double bond, the order is second order. If we have a triple bond, the order is third order. That's straightforward, nothing complicated. All right, so let's think let's let's look at next at bond length for atoms um, let's say for, for let's let's say this for the same atoms for the same atoms that form a bond bond strength increases as we go from single is less than double less than triple bond length decreases as we go from single, from double, to triple. So the, let's think about what this is saying. If we have, um, if we're comparing a carbon-nitrogen single bond and a carbon-nitrogen double bond and a carbon-nitrogen triple bond, the strength of the bond increases as we go from single double to triple. This would be the strongest bond, this would be the weakest bond, comparatively, relatively. The bond length decreases as we go from single, double to triple. The internuclear distance between the carbon and the nitrogen here in a triple bond is going to be smaller than the internuclear distance for a carbon-nitrogen single bond. Relatively straightforward and maybe even intuitive. Let's look at bond energy next. Bond energy or, or bond dissociation energy in other words the energy required um, to, to, to break the bond in a gaseous state it has, it's, so, so the bond dissociation energy is the enthalpy required so it requires energy to break bonds so one mole of a particular excuse me bond is broken in the gaseous state. Some bond enthalpies are given, say for example, in this table here. These are bond energies, bond enthalpies. 
this is the amount of energy it takes to break a hydrogen-hydrogen single bond. A carbon-hydrogen bond would be there, and so on. A nitrogen, nitrogen single bond is there. One thing to uh, keep, keep in mind um, is a nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond is going to be stronger, right, than a nitrogen-nitrogen double bond. And we see the same thing with carbon, carbon triple bond and carbon carbon double bond. Okay, so, so what we had talked about a moment ago makes sense. So energy is required. This is the energy required to break the bond. Okay. And what we can do with this is the following. We can estimate enthalpies of reaction. So we can take bond enthalpies and estimate enthalpies of reaction. So we remember that energy is required to break bonds. And energy is released when bonds are formed. Molecules with stronger bonds are more stable than molecules with weaker bonds because of that. So it turns out, so, so, so let's, let's look at this. Molecules Stronger bonds or higher bond energies. Molecules with stronger bonds are more stable than those with weaker bonds. So let's keep that in mind. All right. So, so let's do this. Let's, let's try to estimate an enthalpy of reaction from the bond energies, keeping in mind that energy is required to break bonds and energy is released when bonds are formed. So let's take a reaction like this. Chlorine and hydrogen in the gas phase are making hydrogen chloride gas. Let's draw the Lewis structures for these. Molecules. And look at how we might estimate the delta H for this based on the bond energies. Well, an estimate for the delta H would be the, would be equal to the bond enthalpy of a hydrogen-hydrogen bond plus the bond enthalpy of a chlorine-chlorine bond minus two times the bond enthalpy of a hydrogen-chlorine bond. We take these values, we get these values, from this table, table 9.5 in your text. So chlorine hydrogen bond has a certain value. And so on. Now I think uh, I apologize here because my values that I have written down are a little bit different. They came from a different, a slightly different table. But we have 432 kilojoules of hydrogen hydrogen bonding plus 240 kilojoules per mole of chlorine-chlorine bond. So this is the energy it takes to break those bonds, right? What we are doing is we are we're breaking those, and we're going to form this one. So we get energy out, negative, when we form the bonds. 
428 kilojoules, and that means we can estimate that the delta H for this process is going to be minus 184 kilojoules per mole. So we can use this idea of bonds that are broken and bonds that are formed to be able to do problems like this. And it involves first drawing the Lewis structure and then looking up the bond enthalpies in a table. And there are several homework problems that you'll have to do with that. It just takes some patience and doing. One of the most important things about this, however, is for you to internalize that energy is required to break bonds and energy is released when bonds are formed.